Today on The Daily Dose, The Rosewood Massacre. Originally settled in 1845 by both black and white Americans alike, African Americans in Rosewood, Florida, would suffer the same black codes and Jim Crow segregation laws as any other post-Civil War blacks in the Southern U.S. After most whites in Rosewood moved to nearby Sumner by the 1890s, on New Year's Day, 1923, 22-year-old Fanny Taylor claimed she was assaulted in her home by a black man. And when Sheriff Walker did little to find the perpetrator, Fanny's outraged husband gathered a white mob to hunt down the suspect. In response, white haters from Gainesville, including about 500 Ku Klux Klan members, descended on Rosewood, where law enforcement told them that a black prisoner named Jesse Hunter had escaped a chain gang, which set the mob in search of the missing prisoner. Convinced that Jesse Hunter was being hidden by Rosewood blacks, they forced Aaron Carrier out of his house, dragged him to Sumner behind a car, where he was cut loose and beaten to only inches of his life. When blacksmith Sam Carter confessed under duress that he had hidden the prisoner in some nearby woods, the mob shot him and hung him from a tree when he failed to produce the convict. After Sarah Carrier hid some 25 frightened black children in her house, she and her son were killed by white racists, which later set the mob to destroying Rosewood one home and business at a time. As the town burned to the ground, many surviving blacks hid themselves over the next few days in nearby swamps until Sarah Carrier's surviving son, James, led them to safety. For his alleged interference in helping his frightened brethren, the last of the white mob forced the Good Samaritan to dig his own grave before they murdered him. After Florida Governor Carrie Hardy offered to send in the National Guard to restore order, Sheriff Walker declined the help, and while the white haters began to disperse, a group returned on January 7th to burn what little remained of the town. A special prosecutor and grand jury were appointed by Hardy to investigate. But after some 30 mostly white witnesses had testified, the jury was released after the prosecutor failed to find enough evidence for criminal prosecution. The surviving African Americans of Rosewood never returned after the killing spree and the destruction of their homes and businesses, making the Rosewood Massacre yet another stain in the South's long history of racial injustice. And there you have it, the Rosewood Massacre. Today on The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, share the link with a friend or colleague, particularly the dumb ones that don't know Jack.